Well, hello there, everyone, and thank you for tuning in to the weekly OTR Essential Q&A video. Yeehaw! Let's try to have a little fun here. Thanks to all of you that submitted your questions via your social media device. Let's hope these questions are good. Byron Andreas kicks us off. What is your opinion on the Sasha Banks sexual harassment issue? Now, I'm going to be completely honest here. I didn't know there was a sexual harassment issue. Did she talk about this in that documentary video, or was there something else that came out? I feel like I'm out of the loop on this, but honestly, this past week has been incredibly hectic and busy. So if I miss something, somebody clue me in on Twitter to what, what Byron is asking about. Right now, I have no opinion on it because I have no clue what you're talking about. Ken asks, do you think TNA Impact Wrestling will make a comeback with their Access TV deal? My God, you talk about a company that's like a cockroach and just no matter what you do, they find a way to evolve and persevere in spite of all the odds and everything. You know, good for them. Getting a little bit more legitimate of a television deal is definitely a step in the right direction. I don't know if it's anything that's going to make people want to actually start tuning into their product again. But hey, you know what? Another company that does wrestling, that has somewhat of a legitimate television deal, I am definitely down for. Cyanide Rain asks, Is it ironic that Cody Rhodes called you a homophobe, and yet now he's the one getting heat for his behavior at Triple Mania? <laughs> bliss, bliss, bliss. Fuck Cody Rhodes. You know, the, the whole deal with that one was that he joined into the one chant or whatever and encouraged it. Be careful, dude. Those who live in glass houses shouldn't throw stones, if you know what I mean. It's just typical of him. He is a piece of crap. And I would have thought by now that more fans would have understood that, but, you know, understanding that He's one of the driving forces behind all the elite wrestling. There are going to be people that are going to look past all of his crap and stick up for him for no matter what. And no matter what you say or no matter what you do or no matter what you prove, it's not going to matter. Fuck him. Good luck to him. And he's a hypocritical piece of crap, so screw him. The Wrestle Gamer asks, What makes a person a good wrestling commentator? I'm assuming you're talking about those on TV. That is an excellent, excellent question. I think the number one thing, and, and when you watch, it's so striking. The number one thing is a lack of energy. When it feels like it's a chore for the commentators to do their job calling the action, calling the matches, calling the show, now what the hell do you expect the perspective of the fans to be? The number one thing that you must have is energy. The number two thing to me, and especially in WWE, this is lacking. I don't necessarily blame the commentators so much, but just in general. The number two thing is a clearly defined role. If you are a babyface commentator, then be a babyface and go all the way with it. If you are an in-between type of guy, then be in-between in a way that makes sense, not like a Corey Graves. And if you're going to exhibit heel tendencies, then be out there trying to get the heel over, which helps to get the baby face over. The way they do commentary and the whole structure and flow of it is just garbage. Just garbage. And I'd say the number three most important thing that makes a person a good commentator is the ability to relate what they are seeing and experiencing and kind of digest it and serve it to the audience in a way that they can relate to and understand that connects with them. Those would be the top three things I would say. Chrysler San Martin asks, If Triple H is God, how can he let go of his power over NXT? This is another one of what we call folks those non-believers! Those blasphemers! Say it, Chrysler. Blasphemers! How dare you, Uncle? See, here's the thing. God is an omnipotent force. 
He is trying to delegate responsibilities, which is a key of people leadership. Getting others to do more, getting others to do better, getting others to raise their level of performance. So of course, he is going to delegate responsibility to Vince and Kevin Dunn. It's what a God should do. He shouldn't have to just do it all himself. Now you must go and read, read, mind you, all 666 chapters of the Book of God. That's all three sections of it. The Hunter, the Hearst, and the Helmsley. You got that? Blasphemer! James Faluka asked, which rivalry was more important to Undertaker's career, Mankind or Cain? I would say the Mankind one was really important. This is a this is a valid question, even though I think it is Cain. Because you could say at the moment in time that Mankind kind of came into Undertaker's sphere, it was a critical time for the Undertaker character. And Mankind got a lot out of him. They got a lot out of each other. And it kind of re-sparked, I think, a little bit of interest in The Undertaker, frankly. But it's got to be Kane. So many things were done with them throughout the course of the years, so much of them being interconnected, it's got to be Kane. It's got to be! It's got to be Kane! Little Peck. Little Peck, excuse me. See, why not just go all the way and say Little Pecker? We're going to go halfway. Go the distance. You want to get nuts? All right, let's get nuts! Is being a WWE wrestler a terrible job since they're always on the road, they have to pay for their own hotels and car rentals? I, I would say this. Like if you're an underneath guy or a jobber type of guy, it can't be that great of a lifestyle. Because while you'll say, sure, they might be making a hundred or 150000 a year, look at the little time they're actually at home to be able to enjoy their money. They travel around the world, but they really don't see any of it. And their expenses are really high. They pay more in taxes because they're independent contractors. So the WWE doesn't pick up things like unemployment insurance, social security tax, and so forth. If you're not from Canada, don't reside in Canada, then you have to figure out a way to provide your own health insurance, which is even more money out of pocket. Then, depending on your contract status, having to cover hotels and car rentals and so forth and food expenses, like, yeah, you be a crappy job. You get your body beat up. You got to deal with the crap show that is wrestling fans, the wrestling business, WWE. Like, I wouldn't want that job. Why would anybody? Vols fan asked, if Bobby Lashley were to lead a four to five person social justice faction, who are the other members? Who would be the other members of a social justice faction? Well, Since white liberals seem to know, know more about racial injustice than anybody else, especially those that are actually impacted by it, you would have to assume that the rest of this faction would have to be nothing but white guys. It would have to be nothing but white guys. Finn Balor, that feels like the glaringly obvious one. It's got to be Finn Balor. Then, who else would you throw in there? Like, huh, I'm thinking about it. Like, there's so many white guys to choose from. Like, who do you really choose? But Finn Balor is strikingly obvious. Um, needs some size in it. He's always in a faction. So if I could put Eric Rowan in there, why not? He could rampage against body image. Need another monster in there. Put Nia Jax in there. Gotta, 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 or oh, no, even better. Gotta have a lesbian in there, so you gotta put Sonya Deville in there instead of Nia Jax. I apologize. Let, let's keep it fair here. And then the last white person we would have to throw in there would be Apollo Crews. <laughs> what Alex Sutcliffe asked, is it too early for The Fiend to win the Universal title? I don't know that it's too early to, for him to win the Universal title. I don't know if I'd want to sully him with the Universal title at this point. Now, you booked yourself into a corner at Hell in a Cell where you got to figure out something to do, but I don't want him winning the belt. Having The Undertaker come out from underneath the ring 
in the Hell in a Cell and pulling the theme down could be one potential way to do it. Um, you know, if anything, I'd be more concerned. If I was thinking about a world title, I'd be more concerned about building up the Fiend to perhaps win the WWE title at a WrestleMania and maybe putting the Mandible Claw on a Brock Lesnar. Again, I'm against Brock, but you kind of been there and done that, and he hasn't exactly been a box office bonanza. You're trying to build a monster. You're trying to build a star. That's how you do it. Break Doofus. How long do you think AEW will stay on Wednesday nights? Until I see their television product, I am going to refrain judgment, honestly. I think they could stay there into the distant future. Or may not be for long. Michael Andalini, if HBK doesn't get hurt in 98, how would others have been affected? It had been very interesting. Same thing as if Bret Hart had never left at the end of 97, what would have happened? Um, would Austin really have gotten the chance to truly be the guy? I don't know. Especially with HBK and Bret Hart there. They'd be on their bullshit, and they'd be struggling to put other guys over and so forth. Um, you know, that's always a really interesting question. Maybe we'd have gotten Ho or HBK against The Rock. We'd have gotten HBK versus Kurt Angle in that time frame. HBK versus Jericho in that time frame. Like, you could have had some outstanding feuds in that time frame. Just, I wonder what type of impact it would have really had. Stephen Hilton, who is your favorite wrestler, and why is it Psycho Sid? Now that! is an excellent fucking question. The man gave you his leg for your entertainment. Psycho Sid is everybody's favorite wrestler. Because he brings you versatility. He brings you a big guy with aerial skills. And he's a tremendous softball player. MDW, what happens to wrestling Twitter if AEW gets half the viewers of NXT? Oh, God, that's going to be a flame war for the ages, and I'm here for it. <laughs> Rick, how long should Chris Jericho be AEW champion? I think at least heading into 2020. How long into 2020? I think it depends on the ratings you're going to see, the fan interest, and what types of programs they put him in. But I would not be in a hurry to have him drop the strap at this point in time, especially in the early stages of trying to establish that company and their brand and their TV show. Cycle Walker, when's the last time you watched an Ishii match? It has been a while. Shame on me. Like, it's one of the few guys in New Japan that I really, really enjoyed watching. You would think I'd go out of my way to watch more of his matches. Mason Clark, what's the funniest thing you ever saw your old cats do? With Smokey, it was when him and his brother were about nine months, a year old, something like that, I had gotten him a cat pillow, and Smokey was hitting it from the back, and his brother Chico was hitting it from the front. Fucking phenomenal. Like, they were running a train on a cat pillow. And after that, they ate tuna. R.I.P. Smoke. R.I.P. to his bro Chico, too. Man, fucking, that was incredible. That was incredible. I, and I would say for Precious, I can remember one time, it was more than one time because he did it a lot, Feisty would be sitting there and squawking and giving him shit. So he would just sit there and get behind her, bite down on her neck and plow her ass. Taught her discipline, I don't know. Um, Andrew Harrington, how would you grade Kofi's world title reign? Eh, C minus. Wasn't good for box office. I'm kind of over it now. C minus. Big Boss, how long should The Fiend remain undefeated to solidify his character? Uh, no losses anytime soon. I think you allow that to be dictated kind of by how the crowd continues to respond, but no losses anytime soon. Rasslin asks, when Lester wins the title from SmackDown, who would you build to beat him? The Fiend. Do it at WrestleMania. You're trying to build a new monster. That's when you do it. But anyways, thanks to all of you guys that submitted your questions for this Q&A. It's been fun for me, and I hope it was for you, too. And if not, screw you. I'll be back again soon. Remember, not the wrestling show you want, just the wrestling show you need.